Hi everybody, hope you're doing well. My name is Sajid. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the final video in my three-part little video series where I'm talking about all of the books that I read in 2020. If you missed the first part, basically I'm talking about all 33 books that I read last year across three videos. The first video was my least favorite 11, the second video was my middle 11, and this video is going to be my top favorite 11 books of the year. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we start this video, tonight I will be doing a live show on Marinez's channel at 8pm EST on the booktube drama that occurred last year. We'll just be kind of like looking back and reflecting and sharing our thoughts on some of the things that went down in our community during the awful year that was 2020. The link to that will be in the description down below and in the cards up above so if you're watching this video as it comes out you have time to go set a reminder and come join us for the live show and partake in the discussion and if not you could always just watch the live show after it's already been uh, done. So now that that's out of the way let us talk about my top 11 books of the year starting off with book number 11 what We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez. Translated from the Spanish by Megan Dowell, this is a collection of short stories set in post-dictatorship Buenos Aires. And what I like about the book is that it's meant to be not so much of a social commentary, but a portrayal of what was happening at the time with a horror twist. All of these stories are either paranormal or macabre or just outright disturbing. And the author does a really excellent job at creating the mood and the atmosphere and the tension and the creepiness. I was very creeped out by this book there was one story in particular that I had I had to put the book down because it was so scary and I mean mind you I'm not really a horror reader because I'm very easily scared so maybe you might read this and you might not feel as freaked out as I did but the fact that the author was able to do that really goes to show that this book is a very impactful story and was done well so if you haven't read it as yet please do it's fantastic. In 10th place we have Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shah this is the first book in a duology and it is the only YA novel to make it into to the top 11 list so congratulations Miss Sha. This is a YA sci-fi set in a futuristic underwater London where our main protagonist is basically on the run from the government so she's like in the submarine and she does something to kind of like piss off the people in charge so she's like running away from them and she's also running away from these like random demonic mermaids and it is just it's just such a fun read. What I really appreciate about the book is that the main character was Muslim and the story itself has nothing to do with Islam or being Muslim or anything like that but it was just really cool to see a sci-fi story with a practicing Muslim main character just kind of you know doing what she has to do trying to survive this dystopian world but what I like about this book the most is the setting as I said it's set in an underwater London so the whole world has been submerged in this one big ocean and everybody has to like live in submarines and like waterproof buildings and big domes and bubbles and whatnot and the main character is kind of exploring the city in her submarine and we're getting this really gorgeous world building of London but underwater and Shah does a brilliant job at bringing that setting to life. I really enjoy this and I'm looking forward to the second book which will come out maybe later this year or next year I'm not too sure but I am very much looking forward to that. In ninth place we have The Beauty of Your Face by Sahar Mustafa and this is a story about a school shooting. The principal of the school is stuck in a room with the school shooter and from there we get a bunch of flashbacks into her life as well as a few into his life as well. It's a really sad story that is honestly about the consequences of growing up in a dysfunctional family that doesn't really know how to properly communicate the things that they are going through. It's a story about how the lack of mental health resources could really take a toll on a family's experience. I realize that I like books that kind of dive into the complexities of a person's life and history and I love books that are not told in a linear format where we're jumping back and forth between different periods of time. So this kind of like sets a precedent for the rest of books that you'll be seeing in this video. It's probably one of the only if not the only new releases that I read this year and the only new release that is on this top 11 list and for good reason. It is excellent. It is such a wonderful story. It's not perfect by any means necessary but it really did leave an impact on me. This is one of those books where I read it and it wasn't like a five-star read or anything like that but it really did 
like leave an impact on me and I still keep thinking about it till this very day. My favorite thing about it was that it's a story about a woman who finds her way back to Islam. She grows up in a, as I said, a dysfunctional family, but a family that's not very religious. Even though they identify as Muslim, they don't really practice. And the main character, as a coping mechanism, rediscovers Islam and becomes involved in the faith again. And while the community that she gets involved with definitely has their problems, and those things are definitely addressed throughout the book how toxic religious communities can actually be it also shows how religious communities can be a safe haven and a savior and it really kind of addresses that complexity and nuance of how religious communities can both make and break you at the same time so it's a wonderful read and if you haven't read it as yet or if it was on your radar this year and you didn't get around to it please do, you won't regret it. Book number eight is Brother by David Chariandi, who is a Trinidadian Canadian author, and this book follows a Trinidadian Canadian protagonist. It's set in Toronto, and we're following two brothers, Michael and Francis, and we're following them in two timelines, 10 years apart. And you could tell that between those two timelines, something really big happened to cause a rift between the two brothers, and you don't quite know what it is until you reach the end of it. And it is one of the most heartbreaking and powerful books that I read this year. It was one of the first books that I read this year as well and the first book that we read for Bashman book club this year and it was stunning it was really stunning is the best way I could describe this story it's a story about masculinity it's a story about brotherhood and it's a story about the consequences of over policing and police brutality in black and brown communities in Toronto which is something you don't hear too much about oftentimes when the conversation about police brutality is brought up in North America it's often seen as like a very American thing which is true but it exists universally and everywhere and Canada is often kind of like falsely painted as this like you know anti-racist utopia which is ridiculous and so I like how this book kind of delves into that experience particularly in the Canadian context I think it was done really well and I highly recommend that you pick this one up I definitely will be reading more from David Chariandi in the future books number seven and six are from here to eternity and smoke gets in your eyes respectively by Caitlin Doty so Caitlin Doty is a mortician. She has a whole YouTube channel called Ask a Mortician, which is like my favorite YouTube channel. I absolutely adore her content. She basically makes content about death and dying, and she writes books about death and dying. These two are memoirs about her experiences like working in the death industry and doing work around death and dying. The first book that I read from her was From Here to Eternity, which is basically where she traveled the world and observed different cultures and the ways in which they practice rituals surrounding death and the way that they conceptualize knowledge about death and she uses that to kind of critique our western understandings of death and dying and the western death industry and she also does a lot of criticism of the western death industry in smoke gets in your eyes which is her first memoir i listened to this completely on audio and this one is about her experiences first entering the death industry working in a crematory in San Francisco and in it she just kind of talks about her life it's a lot more personal than the other one and she really delves into like the problems that she has with the western death industry and how it's very capitalist and how it essentially commodifies death a natural organic you know process that happens to every living thing on the planet I just think that Caitlin is really um, offering a unique perspective and we should be paying more attention to her work especially if you're interested in learning a little bit more about death and dying or if you want to confront certain things about this and challenge yourself because this is usually a very difficult and taboo topic for a lot of people I highly recommend that you get into Caitlin's work book number five is A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza this is a story about a Muslim Indian immigrant family living in Southern California it starts off with the son of the family returning after three years being estranged from the family and not talking to anybody when one of his sisters is getting married and from there we jump back and forth in time and it's just complete this is like the definition of non-linear it's so random we're jumping to when they were teenagers and when they were children and when they were young adults and we keep jumping back and forth and slowly but surely we're sort of like really building up the relationship between the characters and getting to really understand why it is 
this one character was kind of marginalized from the rest of his family and it becomes a commentary on how you know religious families and families that are really steeped in community have certain expectations for their children and they're not necessarily abusive or bad or you know oftentimes there's this very stereotypical portrayal that you know they'll disown you or they this book doesn't go down that route but it still manages to address the kind of pressures that these types of families would put on their children to be a certain way with nuance and that's what i really appreciate about this story it had a lot of really interesting things to say about islam and about the muslim community it, it follows a shia muslim family which is not something that we see too often or not something that i see too often in literature and it's just fantastic this was one of the only books this year that really made me cry like the relationship between the family members you you really root for all of them you really want everything to be okay for them in the end and when things don't go your way at certain points in the story it's very very emotional and a very sad story but also a very hopeful story and i love it you should read it <laughs> So books number four, three, and two, I have no idea what order to put them in, but they're all by the same author. So I'm just going to talk about them in order of how I read them. So the author in question is Shani Mutu. And um, this is an author who I've been wanting to read for quite some time, but I never really planned to get around to any of her books this year until I had to read one for a course back in April. And that was Valmiki's Daughter. And this is like her third novel or her, and her fourth book overall, fourth or fifth book. And it is about another dysfunctional family. and it is also very non-linear and I feel like I found my brand. I found my absolute ultimate pinnacle taste in literature. I love stories that are told in a non-linear format, that are told over a long period of time or that are multi-generational and that explore different family members and we're like you know jumping back and forth in time and it's not linear. Like that is that that is my new favorite thing to read. So if you have any recommendations just please 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 just fill up the comments section. This book was great and it was a really good introduction to Shani Mutu's work as well. It is like her longest novel. It's so gorgeously written and we're focusing on this Indo-Trinidadian family living in South Trinidad and the two main protagonists that we're looking at are the father Valmiki and his daughter Vivica because they're both queer and closeted and the story is an essentially an exploration of the consequences of not living an authentic life as a queer person and having to adjust and filter yourself for the sake of keeping up a false image for everybody else and how that could lead you down a really really dark road and we see that and how it plays out in the lives of both of these characters and it's a wild ride one of the best books i read this year absolutely loved it and after reading this one i knew i needed to read more books by shani mutu so i went and i picked up her debut novel this one is called serious blooms at night it's like her most acclaimed novel as well it's historical fiction set on a fictional caribbean island that is very much inspired by trinidad and it centers around this woman named mala who's kind of an enigma in her community nobody knows like who she really is or what happened to her they just know that she's like this batshit crazy old lady and nobody really cares to like unearth her story until we meet Tyler who's like the narrator of this book he begins to slowly kind of like talk to her and talk to people in her life and really figure out what went down and as the story continues to progress we really get to see how things like abuse abandonment trauma homophobia all of these things affected Mala's life and led to her being the person that she is today and it's such a heartbreaking story it's so sad but so tragically beautiful so non-linear dysfunctional families sad tragic but beautiful yeah, I found my taste in literature. I don't know what that says about me. But as I said, it's gorgeously written and my absolute, absolute, absolute favorite thing about this book is the way in which Shani Mutu really brings to life the surroundings and just the landscape of the fictional island. The way that she describes the flora and the fauna, the way that she describes like, you know, natural processes like growth and blooming and decomposition and all of these different things was so beautiful to me and that is what really captivated me the most about this novel. If you're the kind of person who loves to read stories that are so immersively written, especially when it comes to nature, Serious Blooms at Night is, is, is one you'd want to read. Who is that child and why is they screaming? Is that my nephew? So that's my foil nephew throwing a tantrum and my father is like trying to deal with it. So if you hear noise in the background, just... 
The third Shining Mutu book that I read this year is actually her most recent work, and that is Polar Vortex, which is set completely in Canada, and it follows a Trinidadian main protagonist named Priya, who is living with her girlfriend Alex, uh, or her wife Alex, and they are kind of having some trouble in paradise. The book is kind of about their relationship and how things are seemingly okay until this person from Priya's past resurfaces and kind of makes things a little bit more complicated for the couple. It's a story about how sexuality and desire is so complex and vague and so much more complicated than we like to think it is and it's ultimately a story about the consequences of how not communicating with people properly and how not properly you know expressing yourself and talking about your feelings and and how you know repressing certain aspects of your past can have a huge consequence when you know people find out certain things about you it is such a wild ride it was a psychological romp the main character her narration isn't the most reliable and that's what i like about the book the most i also appreciate too that this was a story about like people in their like 50s and 60s we don't really get like queer stories centering flawed complex characters who are older and so i really appreciated that and they weren't like stereotypical old grandmothers sitting in a rocking chair knitting or anything like that they were flawed people and they were still learning even though they were like a, a lot older than the typical protagonist that we tend to see in a lot of the books that we read i absolutely love this book i do own a copy but i lent it out to my friend who's currently reading it i think she finished it and she absolutely loved it shout out to that friend though because she was the one who recommended me my absolute favorite book of the year which i am going to be telling you about right now this was the book that topped all of the other books this book was better than all of the other books that i read this year this book was better than your faves and i hope you managed to come to terms with that and that was of course none other than a silent life by ryan shah this is set in guyana and it's a story about this woman named alia and we're following her for about like four decades of her life from when she's very young to when she's like middle-aged or so and she is very fascinated with her grandmother baby who does not speak her grandmother is a silent woman who does not say a single word and from a very young age Aaliyah starts to get these very interesting visions of her grandmother's past so it's almost like this fabulous element of the book where she would start to see the past and she would start to kind of slowly but surely piece together the traumatic things that happened to her grandmother that led to her living a silent life and she also gets to realize at some point that some of the things that happened in her grandmother's life are kind of repeating themselves in her own life it's a story about intergenerational trauma it's a story about mental health which which was so cool to see a Caribbean novel that was published a while ago back in the early 2000s that focuses really on mental health that's like one of the main aspects of the story and ultimately it's a story about the importance of knowing your history and knowing your past your history your past your family history where they came from and their story is extremely foundational to your own life and experience and you should know your story you should know your history and it is extremely empowering and so eye-opening when you have a broader sense of what your foundation is and where you come from and I absolutely loved that aspect of this story as well my absolute favorite thing about this book though is the prose Ryan Shah's writing is gorgeous the way that she brings to life the Guyanese setting is just absolutely stunning the way that she describes things the ways that she, the way that she does little vision things where the character like sees into the past and the way that she would describe the transformation of like the the present setting and the way that everything would change and she would start seeing the past like this book is just gorgeously gorgeously written some of the best prose that i've read in my entire life and uh for that reason i definitely will be reading more books by ryan cha i also really appreciated that this book even though the family in the book is not really religious whatsoever it's a story that kind of looks at a family who uh from a uh, Indo-Caribbean Muslim context and that's something that I really appreciate because it hits home for me. So I love seeing that kind of like cultural religious representation in the story as well. It was beautiful. It was stunning and everybody needs to read this book it is very underrated you've probably never heard of it you're probably looking like at this book and thinking like sajid what the hell is that cover what book are you talking about i've never seen this book before you haven't seen this book before but you need to read it you need to fix your life and read a silent life by rayan shah because it is absolutely phenomenal 
and it's better than your faves. And there we have it. Those are my absolute favorite books of 2020. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things I could say about this reading year and how things have changed. As you can see, I very much discovered like my new favorite type of literature. Like, I mean, A Silent Life, Shani Mutu, A Place for Us, Brother, The Beauty of Your Face. Like all of those books are very much like non-linear stories about complex family dynamics, about, you know, multi-generational commentary and books set over a long period of time. I love stories like that. I love stories that are a little bit more on the sad, tragic, depressing side because I think that even though those things are hard to read about, they manage to give really beautiful commentary and analysis and exploration of a lot of these difficult topics. So I am really happy for myself because I think I found my new type of favorite stories to read. And I think that this was really the year of literary fiction for me. That's definitely the kind of literature that I want to read. One thing that I have to say though is that this was the year where YA kind of took a step back. I have not read a young adult novel since like July and I haven't read like a full young adult novel that wasn't written in verse or that wasn't an audiobook since April. Not because I'm outgrowing it or because I'm not interested in it anymore, but I think my tastes are just kind of expanding and I'm really um, enjoying some of the other things that are outside of that particular genre. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video series project thing that I put together. I hope you enjoyed seeing me talk about all of the books that I read this year. Um, as for this stack of books, I would love to know if you've read any of them. And if you have any thoughts on them, please leave them in the comments down below. Thank you all ever so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely, lovely day. And until next time, inshallah, keep reading.